I understand that. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for really coming back for part two of Leanne's NDE experience. And I'm actually really excited and I'm going to I'm going to sort of roadmap how we're going to what we're going to talk about tonight, because I think there's some really important key factors. And I'm going to do a little bit of a recap of Leanne's NDE and then she'll add, add any kind of um, uh, either uh, color to it or explicatives, whatever is necessary for however I, I, I might characterize something wrong and I just want to make sure that I'm getting it correct. And then we're going to really talk to Leanne, uh, Leanne's mom, Deb. So Deb, first I want to say thank you so much for joining me and Leanne, thank you as well for coming back. Thank you for having us. So part of the roadmap on here is that I really want to talk um, to Deb about her experiences as she was, as her daughter was moving through her NDE. Many, many, many sessions, many readings, whether they're in groups or individual sessions, I connect with uh, uh, loved ones that cross over that tell me over and over again that the person that's sitting in front of me has tons of guilt about how or why they passed. So I really believe that today could be a, an unlocking conversation uh, with Leanne's mom, Deb, to really help people who have um, had loved ones cross and have guilt around their crossing. So I think this is an incredibly important conversation and I'm so glad Deb that you took time out of your day, out of everything that was happening um, to, to really be a part of this. So I wanted to thank you again. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, um, so Leanne joined us last week and in, in our part one described, uh, she described crossing over to the other side uh, from a swing set. Now, um, in this, there, there are some, and I actually might have you, Deb, take us through that because if you can get, you can actually get caught up by going back and watching part one and then come back here. So I haven't watched part one yet. I would suggest watching part one. I would be wasting time, actually. I just decided waste time and I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to waste anybody's time. So, um, 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 Deb, maybe you can just start us off by you taking us through your version of what happened that day in, uh, in, when Leanne crossed. Okay. Um, well, I was going to take a walk with the kids and then I thought, well, I'll hurry up and mop the kitchen floor, you know, before we took the walk. So I told them, you know, they could go outside and play a little bit. I'd be done in the next couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. So I was mopping and all of a sudden, my, I was thinking it, it was my five-year-old, but uh, my two-year-old told Leanne that he came in and said, Le he always called her Nan or something mm -hmm. like that. He said, Nan's sleeping on the fence. And I, I didn't understand at first. Well, then my five-year-old came in and said, mom, Nan's hanging on the fence. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding? And he said, no, come on. <laughs> So I went out the door and I saw her and I about flipped out. I threw the mop. I don't know where. And so I went over and I tried to get her off the post because she was hanging on the fence post. What was and she, So, yeah, sometimes, Deb, I should tell you, I interrupt. What was she what was she hanging by? What was what was. Oh, it was her hood because um, after I was, you know, let him go out. Well. I hollered at her to come back in because I wanted her to wear a jacket and her hood. Oh. And so I tied her hood. And then when she was, I guess she was swinging real high and the hood got flipped off and it caught on the fence post. Oh. It was one of those, you know, wire fences with the metal fence post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she was hanging on that. And I had seen my brother when I was doing this. I seen my two-year-old brother at the time when I was still trying to do that. And he he could I couldn't get no voice out. And then um once I seen him, that was it. And then then that's when that came in. Wow. So you're the two year old and the five year old. Five year old comes gets you. Yeah. I mean they both come get you. Yeah. Yeah. And Pretty uh, much. <laughs> So you try so to get then, her off the fence. Yeah, I was trying to get her off the fence, which is a little hard because she was all limp. And oh. I couldn't get the, I couldn't get the tie undone. So I, I don't really remember how I did it. 
but somehow I, I got it off and I lifted her up and then I took her in the house and I was still trying to get some motion out of her, Mm -hmm. but she wouldn't. And then I started thinking, you know, then I think I panicked and then I'm thinking, God, what am I going to do? And so I don't know, all of a sudden I thought to call 911, I'm going to do it. (laughs) I mean, this is intense. You, I mean, you're reliving the moments when you're, you're, she's at, I mean, think Leanne told us last week that she was on a table at that point. Yeah. Well, I think, did I do it? I don't remember if I blew a breath in her mouth. You did. You did. Before I called 911. Oh. Or oh. after. Oh, okay. I called 911 and then I called my father in law. And I think he, I asked him to call my husband at work. Okay. And, oh, and then the ambulance came and they was working on her. And then they was going to take her in the ambulance and they had me go in with her. And so you were in the ambulance with her. How long yeah. do you think between 911 and, the, and, the, and them showing up? Not long at all. Oh, Maybe okay. four minutes, five minutes, oh. if that. And then... Was I breathing at all? No. No. Uh-uh. Because they was... I think they was starting to do like CPR on her on the way mm. there. Mm. And then my father-in-law, he's the one that told me to go with her. Okay. And then he took the boys um, to the hospital. And then my husband met all of us there at the hospital. But then we just, everybody had to sit in the waiting room, you know, because they wouldn't let us in there. Uh-huh. And then, then we heard her screaming and crying. And we go, oh, God, thanks. Right. So at that point, that's the only time you knew that your daughter was back. If yeah. you heard her screaming and screaming and crying. And yeah. so did they usher you out of the emergency room? Like go sit in the waiting room. You can't be in here kind of a thing. Is that what? Uh, well, when we first got there. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And then after, after that, she was, she started being just fine. <laughs> after this, after, after waking up from, yeah. you know, well, actually <laughs> after coming back from the other side. Yeah, they started giving her popsicles and everything. A little, be- a little bell. Yeah, she needed that was, That's what I was driving nuts with the nurses. Oh, that's right. That's right. The little bell. Yep. Yeah. So, she said that the nurses even said to her, "Her daughter was bringing that bell all night." Long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what have you, as as your daughter has grown up and you reflected on this, and you've, I'm sure you've you've lived this and thought about this a lot since it happened. Right. What, tell me what your thoughts on the, uh, on the whole experience have been and what it's meant for you and what has it been like to listen to her talk about crossing over to the other side? Well, I mean, I'm a Christian, so mm-hmm. I believed it, you know, me when too. she said that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I don't, I, every once in a while, you know, I'll think about it and you know, I don't, I don't really know what to say about that, but, um, I did feel guilty because after it happened, I said, I just had to mop, didn't I? <laughs> oh. <laughs> if I went to mop, then, you know, everything would have been fine. Everything would have been fine. You would just, uh, well, you never know. It, it could have been some other way. Um, and she right. told, and she told me that she's blamed herself all these years for that. And I said, "Mom, it's an accident. It can happen to anybody watching. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody would ever thought that putting a swing set in front of a fence would ever do something like that for a child. You know, um, in that predicament. So, I mean, so tell her what." Um, you guys did after I got, oh, yeah. <laughs> so after she got home from the hospital and everything, it didn't take us long to get that fence down. Right. It was gone. <laughs> yeah, it was gone. Yeah. And then we, we had, um, insurance and the money we got from that, we bought them a new swing set, but we 
put it out in the other yard. Uh -huh. the big yard. No fence anywhere. <laughs> right in the smack dab in the middle. So that way nothing is around it. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and so. um and how how was the what sort of interactions did you and your husband have regarding um uh, your daughter's NDE? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> what What does he think about it? Have you guys spoken about it? Uh, like, um, not really. I mean, we both felt really bad about what happened, mm -hmm. and we were thankful that nothing really bad happened. That she wasn't with us. Yeah, and, no. There's a lot to be thankful for. That for sure, for sure. Yeah. Now, did I start talking about that right after I had came back and stuff? Did I ever say anything about, you know, when I seen the tunnel and stuff? Did I, did you ever, you know, did I ever talk about that right away? Not right away, I don't think. Um, when you got a little older, I, maybe a couple of years later, you did start talking about it. That's what did, I wondered. Did, when she started talking about it, did it take a while to figure out that she was talking about a near-death experience? Um, no, I kind of got what she was talking about. Oh, like quickly, like you knew. Yeah. You know, because going to church and everything, you learn about things about when you die and you go to heaven and all that kind of thing. So it didn't take me long to figure that part out. Mm. So was there any, um, any, any part of the NDE experience with, uh, with Leanne that you, that you look back at and, and, and you just are, uh, you know, it's as far as piecing it together and understanding how quickly it happened, was there any pieces of it that, that stick out to you that you have had either questions about or wondered about? Well, just about, um, like she's had a lot of back problems mm -hmm. and health problems. So, when she go to the doctor, you know, we, like, even when she was older, we'd ask her to ask the doctor, you know, if, if she, she got those things from hanging on the swing mm. hang on. or the fence. fence. Cause we thought, you know, if it jerked her hard enough, maybe it would cause some problems. Yeah. yeah. Cause I have, cause I have scoliosis. Oh, yeah, so my problems just keep going on. I have 13 different health issues that are all not related and doctors don't understand why I have all these and they've never seen this before. So it's very um, hard. Yeah, I've had four back surgeries and um, last one I went paralyzed and wow. I, had to relearn, I had to relearn how to walk all over again and everything. So now I'm starting to hurt again after almost six years of my last surgery and so now it's like I got a walker and I use my cane everywhere I go. And then I also have a power wheelchair for, you know, longer distance. Oh, wow. I, I, I have not heard that. I've only heard of NDEs healing people, not necessarily yeah. hurting, but you know, that doesn't mean that I know everything because I don't <laughs> for sure. For sure. Have, did you notice any difference in her behavior, Leanne, uh, from, of Leanne from before her NDE and then after NDE? No, not that I can think of. Was I sweeter? <laughs> it's always sweet. That's so sweet. <laughs> You're always sweet. That's you've heard it here first. Leanne, Leanne's mom, Deb, always sweet. That's perfect. <laughs> Both of you are very, very sweet. So I'm interested. Have you ever heard, um, Deb, have you ever heard Leanne like connecting with angels or, or anything that you've kind of witnessed supernatural? No, I can't say I have. Mm. I mean, she would, you know, like little girls do, they would um, have like little tea parties and have the little cups and then they would talk to their little friends and stuff, you know, things like that. But nothing as far as like that, she'd be talking to an angel or somebody. So Leanne, tell me how old were you? Do you remember how old this was, Deb? <laughs> she was four, I think. Mm -hmm. I was four years old. And when did, four years old is when the NDE happened. Is that correct? I can't remember how old, or four yeah. or five. 
four. Yeah, yeah. four. Mm -hmm. So it's really possible that you could have connected with something on the other side and, and it's your imaginary friend. Did she have an imaginary friend as she grew up? No, I don't remember seeing her having one. And see, my thing, that, what I don't understand is like, I remember that incident, like, like it was, you know, today, mm -hmm. but why do I not remember before that? Why do I not remember even at five, six years old? I don't remember anything. Mm. It's like my memory has gone of all that stuff. And I'm just supposed to focus on this that has happened. And I'm not really for sure why, um, because, you know, as kids we're innocent. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. And I keep having that thing in my head of that person I seen, you know, in the, in the tunnel and you yeah. just, and it's been on my mind ever since I've been woke up is who was that person, you know? So, and it's, it's still, it, it'll still be on my mind to this day. You know, I, you just can't help it. Right. You're just no. uh, very curious. Uh, and no, that makes absolute sense. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> pardon me. <laughs> I apologize for that cough. Oh my goodness. So, um, <laughs> I, I don't necessarily know. I, I, I don't, I have no clue if they didn't tell you, maybe something that unlocks later because some NDEs mm -hmm. open as time goes on. Um, I think that it's a, I think that's pretty exciting that, um, you know, uh, Deb, that you were able to come here tonight. I'm wondering, you know, understanding that your daughter was crossed, you know, crossed the other side. And I know, I understand that you have a very big faith. Um, uh -huh. What is a consolation or, or something that how, did it help you in dealing and with any bit of your guilt or that you felt or um, about mopping about any part, the hood, anything. It, was that any solace? Did, did it help you to know that sh there was something that came afterwards and that she wasn't feeling pain? Yes. Yeah, that, that helped a lot. That helped a lot. Yeah, and I really appreciate her and my brothers because if it wasn't for them, you know, I wouldn't be here today to tell you, my story. Right, and, you, you know... So, I, I mean, I... And I told her, I said, don't ever feel... You know, like it's her fault Ugh. because it's not, yeah. I do not, I do not, whew. I do not blame her for anything. Things happen for a reason and that's just how it is, you know, and, uh, as you grow up, I'm 45 now, um, you just learn to appreciate life more and yeah. uh really really look around at everything that is around you the life of nature you know the birds just everything that god gives us on mm -hmm. this earth you know you have to really appreciate your life a lot more than than what you ever did so absolutely absolutely well i just really i if is there anything that i've missed or anything that you think i should uh uh talk about anything else that you want to talk about in in respect to the NDE that, um, that I may not have covered that you're like, Oh, wait, I want to say this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, for myself, I think we've covered everything. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm just uh, very thankful also that I got to see the other side and how bright and beautiful the white light is nice you know i really do appreciate all of that stuff so one day when i am past what a glorious day it's going to be you know it really it, it will because I, and I tell everybody that and everybody's like why do you say that because i mean it's a beautiful place and i could go beyond that and see how even more beautiful it is and yeah I will be able to walk and everything and not have to worry about any more back pain, no more anything, you know, and just be free, you know, but till then I am not ready. I'm, I'm ready to keep telling my stories and, um, I have a lot more so that way I could help other people out. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. It's been an absolute pleasure. I am. Uh, I just really want to thank everybody for tuning in and, you know, it's always like coming and sitting in our, in our living room as we have this discussion. So I want to thank everybody for coming. <laughs> really appreciate it, Deb. Appreciate it, Leanne. Um, and I will, I will just stop the recording and hang out with you guys for a minute. Okay. <laughs>